All right, guys, I'm back. Let's get this video going so we can uh, wrap it up. Let's do it. During this period, Pol Pot and his Khmer Rouge allies took advantage of the distraction offered by China's intervention to establish control over parts of the northwest of the country along the border with Thailand. Armed with financial and military aid from China and the United States, Pot was trying, in the summer of 1979, to reinvent the Khmer Rouge. Efforts were made to disavow the party's former socialist past and actions, while Pot tried to position himself as the leader of a new patriotic democratic front, an alliance of disparate political and military groups which opposed the Vietnamese-backed regime in Phnom Penh. The leader of the Khmer Rouge even attempted to reinvent himself by dropping his pseudonym, Pol Pot, and adopting the name Pem after his father. Incredibly, these actions won him some credibility on the international stage, and in November 1979, the United Nations chose to recognize the Khmer Rouge as the government of Cambodia over the administration in Phnom Penh, despite the appalling crimes of the regime in recent years, the full extent of which was admittedly still unknown to the world in 1979. Thus, by the end of the first year of the Cambodian-Vietnamese War, the stage was set for an extended showdown between the Vietnamese and their puppet regime in Phnom Penh and the many militant groups which controlled much of the country and of which the Khmer Rouge was just one. This was effectively a new civil war in Cambodia. It would last as long as that which had first brought Pol Pot and the Khmer Rouge to power in 1975. The Cambodian-Vietnamese War lasted for another 10 years. The Khmer Rouge was just one of the militant groups fighting against the People's Republic of Kampuchea and Vietnam in these years. Foremost amongst these other groups was the National United Front for an Independent, Neutral, Peaceful and Cooperative Cambodia, or Phan Sinh Pek, which was formed in 1981 by the stalwart of Cambodian politics, the former King Sihanouk. Then, in an effort to win over more support for the Khmer in response to the formation of Sihanouk's Phun Simpek, Pol Pot officially dissolved the Communist Party in 1981 and proposed a new nationalist movement, an indication of his ongoing ideological flexibility. Then, as the fighting wore on in an interminable series of guerrilla attacks in the jungles and foothills of Cambodia in the mid-1980s, Pol Pot began moving away from the forefront of the movement and in September 1985, he resigned as the military commander of the Khmer Rouge, in part owing to reverses the previous year when the Vietnamese had pushed the Khmer forces into Thailand from Cambodia, and in part owing to his own declining health. In 1983, he was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma, a relatively severe type of cancer, which required him to spend extensive periods of time in Bangkok and Beijing, receiving mm. medical treatment. Watch this. I can show you how to get the sweetest deals online when you shop from major retailers like Amazon Sorry about the ad, you, guys. you can drop Sorry. prices automatically. I add. As the war dragged on interminably into the late 1980s, Pol Pot began to make it known to political elements within Cambodia and abroad that he would not seek to return to power should the war end. Rather, his sole wish was to see the Vietnamese removed from Cambodia, or at least that is what he claimed. As ever, this statement came about largely owing to wider geopolitical circumstances. By the end of the decade, the communist bloc worldwide was in decline, and the Cold War was drawing to an end. As it did, Vietnam, which had been largely ostracized from the global community since the 1970s, determined to bring its role in Cambodia to an end also. In 1988, it began withdrawing the nearly 100,000 troops which it had in Cambodia, and instituted a series of political and economic reforms designed to prop up the People's Republic of Kampuchea and to fully disentangle itself from the country. And by September 1989, it had withdrawn the last of its troops from the country. Once a ceasefire was proclaimed in 1990, peace negotiations began between the various groupings within Cambodia to find a workable way forward in establishing the country. Despite its crimes, while in power between 1975 and 1979, the Khmer Rouge with Pol Pot as its leader would play a part in these negotiations. 
In the talks which followed, Pol Pot remained in an obscure location near the border between Thailand and Cambodia, and instead dispatched his close associate in the Khmer Rouge, Q Sampan to Phnom Penh, to represent the party. Here, negotiations largely centered around Sampan, Sihanouk, and the head of the pro-Vietnamese faction Hun Sen. Sampan struck an antagonistic pose in the capital, declaring that the Khmer Rouge refused to disarm its troops in western Cambodia. In response, Sen and Sihanouk proved similarly recalcitrant. As a result, sporadic fighting continued throughout the early 1990s, even as negotiations continued in Phnom Penh. Eventually, it was agreed that national elections would be held in the early summer of 1993. The results were a sharp rebuttal of Pol Pot and his Khmer Rouge, with Sen and Sihanouk's parties cumulatively winning nearly 80% of the vote. It was the beginning of the end for the Khmer Rouge and for Pol Pot too. Sihanouk now negotiated a coalition with Sen, and the new combined government launched an offensive against the Khmer Rouge in western Cambodia. While the initial gains made by the government were pushed back by a counteroffenses launched by Pot, in the course of 1994, the party was nevertheless witnessing increasing desertion of its forces in Cambodia in the months that followed. On its last legs, from this point onwards, it had little more than a few thousand troops occupying a small segment of the border region with Thailand. But despite its weakness, it would take until 1999 for the Cambodian government to fully defeat the party which had so terrorized its own country in the 1970s. However, Pol Pot would not live to see the final defeat of the Khmer Rouge. The man who had been born as Salat Tsar in the 1920s and who had created such immense human suffering in his homeland, eventually met his end in 1998, but his downfall had come shortly before that. With the Khmer's fortunes at their lowest ebb ever, the husk of a party which remained turned against its leader in 1997. Paranoia and internal disputes plagued the leadership in the wilds of Western Cambodia by this time, and in a party coup in the summer of 1997, Pol Pot and his family were placed under house arrest by a rival faction, led by one Ta Mok. By that time, Pol Pot did not have long to live in any event. He suffered from a heart condition and a stroke had left him partially paralyzed and needing regular oxygen. Moreover, his cancer remained and without access to effective medical care, he was deteriorating rapidly. Such was the wreckage of a man whom the Khmer Rouge put on trial in July 1997 in a remarkably hypocritical act. He was sentenced to life in prison by the party which he had himself led for over 30 years. But that life would end shortly thereafter. On the 15th of April 1998, Pol Pot died in his sleep as his heart gave out. Though suspicions have since arisen that he committed suicide to avoid being handed over to the United States for trial. On the mm. 21st of April 1998, six days. People don't want to mess with America, huh? There's always going to be some type of suspicion surrounding people's passings after his death, he was cremated in a Buddhist ceremony. Thus died one of the 20th century's most brutal dictators. He left behind a country which today is littered with landmines, and a scarred history and a Heard largely authoritarian that. state. There is no doubting that Pol Pot Excuse was me. one of the true monsters of the 20th century, a century in which such figures abounded throughout the world. But what perhaps marks Pol Pot out is the enormous brutality <laughs> with which Excuse he me. and the Khmer Rouge carried out the Cambodian genocide between 1975 and 1979. During these years, the regime turned against everyone within its borders. Foreigners and political dissenters were targeted above others, as is usually the case with totalitarian Excuse societies. Me. But Pot and his followers even turned allergies. entirely against their Sorry about that, guys. Uh, my allergies are bad. I just got back from the school. That's why this is part two of the uh whole part and allergy season yeah kicked in so guys forgive me their own people murdering hundreds of thousands of cambodians in mass labor camps in a crazed pursuit of agricultural productivity <laughs> which only succeeded Excuse in creating me. a famine as a result pol pot's regime murdered 
and killed nearly one out of every four Cambodian citizens oh, wow. in less than half a decade during the late 1970s. It is hardly any surprise that, as a result, the United Nations and the Red Cross were already declaring by 1979 that Pol Pot and his regime were bringing about the near destruction of Cambodian society. Only the intervention of the Vietnamese that year stopped the crazed, horrific killing. That oh. is Pol Pot's legacy. There is nothing approaching any rationalizations which can be made for it. What do you think of Pol Pot? Was he perhaps the most tyrannical dictator of the entire 20th century? Please let us know in the comment section. And in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Yes. Horrify. So guys, have you, if you hadn't seen part one of this video, please go do that. I had to stop this video um, like 85% of the way because I had to go to a um, open house at the school for the children. So yeah, this is part two. If you guys like the first one or the second one or any other videos for that matter, please leave me a like. Comment down in the description below what you guys would like to see next and I'll do my best to get that video out to you guys. Um, don't forget to subscribe if this is your first time or if you're a returning visitor, please subscribe. You can help the channel. Also, turn on your post, notica post notification bells to stay tuned to more videos. Once they've been posted, you guys will become the active individuals who will be notified upon release. So, as always, thank you again for watching the content. Thank you guys for tuning in with your boy Infinite J. Again, as always, peace, love, respect, and positivity. Gone. Oh, wait, before I go, I should have cards of my next videos uh, listed right here. There should be a recent video that you guys can go and watch. Uh, there should be another video that will be up here. And then there should be one right. Oh, sorry. Right over here. So, yeah, right over here. So, yeah, go.